now we're building up to a huge weekend of Rugby World Cup quarterfinals. England, Ireland and Wales are all in the last eight. And former England scrum half and World Cup winner Matt Dawson is with us to look ahead to those matches now. Matt, thank you so much Pleasure. for joining us. There is plenty to dive into. And you've actually been in France a fair bit over the last few weeks. How much have you been enjoying the tournament so far? Uh, yeah, it's... Um... It's hectic. Yeah. It is really hectic. Going from uh, Marseille, Nice, Lille, Lyon, Paris, um, but France have, have gripped it. And I think obviously because Fran how, how well France are playing, um, the nation are so behind them. And, and travelling supporters, the Irish fans, crazy, absolutely off the charts. Um, so, yeah, in, in France, it's been, it's been hectic. Yeah, I'm sure, sure it has been. And the, the, the travelling fans have been great. One of our producers has been there for every single one of England's group games. Uh, let's focus on England ahead of this, uh, these last eight. They, of course, face Fiji on Sunday over there. There they yeah. are. Uh, the big question, and there are plenty of reports around this, actually, is around the fly half spot. Some reports that George Ford will be dropped, that Owen Farrell will start. What's your reaction to that? Because that's been the sort of talking point, hasn't it, throughout the tournament? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a big call. Yeah, fly half being such an important uh, important position. Um, Owen Farrell obviously has some incredible uh, strengths and influence on the England side around the train park. You hear a lot from players, former players, coaches about his influence uh, in the in the classroom on the training field. Um, but then I suppose when it comes to the form fly half for England, it's George Ford. Yeah. Uh, how we played against Argentina and Japan, particularly total control. First time for a while, England looked cohesive. Um, so it's a, it's a really big shout. It didn't go particularly well last week against Samoa when they both played. So, yeah, I, I think probably the rumours are true that it will be one or the other playing at 10. Um, I mean, my, my own view is that I, th I think if you're going to play against Fiji, you've, you've, got to, you've got to be able to score some tries. I probably would go with four, but I think where Borthwick is going to go is Farrell. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it, making these sort of tinkering changes sort of at the quarterfinal spot. The other fly half in the squad is, of course, Marcus Smith. He's been used at fullback. We saw him against Chile at, at fullback. He had a great run of the park, but he has been on the bench for the most for most of the tournament reports again that he will actually start yeah. at fullback ahead of Freddie Stewart what do you make of, of that one and what's the thinking behind that yeah oh, if only i knew <laughs> um, i would be out there in camp i th there's no question when marcus smith has been on the field something's happening uh, england look a very different side um, particularly coming on at fullback with a little bit more space, a little slightly less or a different type of responsibility, he can light up the England team. My question is how they're going to get the ball to him. Yes, from broken field play, you know, I'm not sure Fiji are going to kick as much as maybe a, an Ireland or a, a New Zealand. They're, they're going to want to attack. So it's probably going to be down to England to give him the ball. So you need your distributors to give him the ball. And George Ford is by far the best distributor. So I'm, I'm torn a little bit. If they are going to go with Farrell, who can s still sort of play that game, but hasn't quite got it like George Ford, how are we going to get this magician into the game other than just from turnover ball? Because he can create havoc with the opposition. He can threaten Fiji and bring a different dimension to him. Yeah, speaking of flair players, we saw Henry Arundel scoring five tries against Chile. He had a great day out, didn't he? Then he was completely left out of the squad against Samoa. There's been rumours that he might have been involved in a bust-up with Farrell, but surely, when you look at this game and how everyone wants to see England play with some creativity, with some flair, he's at least got to be in the 23, right? I've got to be honest, I think we'd probably quite like to see the bust-up, wouldn't we? I mean, that would... <laughs> That would make, make a good Saturday night box office on Sky Sports. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a really tricky one for this guy. He is electric. He is, he is capable of doing things other players simply can't do, possibly in the world. I think he's just got to understand and learn the game a little bit more. It might be just maybe a year too early uh, for Henry. Um, great. What an achievement. Five tries in a game. It was against Chile. A lot of them were... You've got to be in the right place just to walk it in. A couple of fantastic tries. His time, I'm sure his time will come. 
saying that, if they did play him, if he was on the field, he can cre create some havoc. So, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't discount it. Yeah, let's talk about the opponents then, Fiji, because we know that they can play. They're the masters of the offload. They play with a lot of, of attacking threat as well. They beat England at Twickenham in the last those warm-up matches before the tournament. Just how difficult and how dangerous, it, how dangerous could they be for England? Yeah, they're, they're, they're going to they're gonna be really tricky. Um, of course, England are going to, but Jamie George this week was saying about how it's hurting at the moment from that defeat at Twickenham only a few weeks ago. However, these individuals, as well as collectively, but individuals are a step ahead of um, a lot of other those perceived second tier nations. They are going to score tries. They are going to break the line. England are going to be under pressure. It's how England can deal with being under pressure um, that will define this quarter final but they will be a threat and it's going to be a tough game to call who's coming through england i'm going to say england by eight points and just very quickly the other quarterfinals as well can ireland do it over new I, zealand I, th I think ireland will do it over new zealand i think france will do it over south africa and i think wales will do it over argentina okay matt thank you very much we've run out of time this morning